And then Jews and Christians prayed here in the building side by side as a symbol of coexistence. So I really, I want to tell you, Oron, I really am impressed with your line of questions because you're one of the first people in a long time that I've heard, instead of focusing too much on the politics, to understand that what's really behind the issue of Hebron is the forefathers and mothers. That's really what is at the heart. So, here it is, the cave of the patriarchs, where our fathers and our mothers are buried. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah, and Rachel, the second wife of Jacob, is buried in uh, Bethlehem, which is between Hebron, where we are now, and Jerusalem. Hebron is located 35 kilometers south to Jerusalem. 3,800 years ago, the Bible details how Abraham negotiated and purchased the cave and the land surrounding it from the Hittites. According to Jewish mysticism, the book called the Zohar states that the cave is the entrance to the Garden of Eden. A secret Adam discovered when he smelled the fragrance of the garden emanating from the cave. After this revelation, Adam buried his wife Eve in the cave, later joining her after his death. The special holiness of the Machpelah cave was also revealed to Abraham, leading him to seek it out as a burial place for Sarah and their descendants. So we're walking up the steps to the Machpelah cave. According to Jewish tradition, deceased souls and prayers ascend to the Garden of Eden through the cave of Machpelah. 800 years later, Hebron was the capital of the tribe of Judea and later became the royal capital of King David for seven years before he ascended to Jerusalem. And this is the city of Hebron. Yeah, but it's the old city of Hebron. A thousand years forward, at the end of the second temple, King Herod built the monumental structure atop the cave complex to honor the resting place of the forefathers and mothers. This Jewish structure is the world's only public building that has stood intact for more than 2,000 years and which to this day continues to serve what it was intended to be at its founding, a monumental memorial and a place of worship. Yes. This probably wasn't the main entrance of the cave, Machpelah cave. The Muslims changed it with the years. I see. The real entrance was probably here. Here. And it was like the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Like Keshet Robinson, the same kind of entrance we used to have, but it was here probably. This place here is what the Muslims believe that the head of Asaph is. Asaph, the brother of Jacob. This probably was the main entrance of the, of the Machpelah cave years ago. The scientific uh, facts about it and people were. Uh, Lots of uh, research is talk about that. I see. Now in front of us is the entrance to Ulam Yitzchak, Yitzchak's uh, side where the Muslims pray. The place is open only on uh, special events, only 10 years at the IU. We open these doors and Jews are allowed to go in. I see. This side of the grid. This here is the, where they uh, seem to be Avraham Avinu was buried, but basically his cave isn't here, it's downstairs. If you look straight, you can see the Arab women taking pictures on the other side. Oh, I see. In the, in the cave underneath us. Is How many meters? Nine meters. Nine meters. Probably. But you can see all the Arab uh, writings. writings and pictures that are here. And the Arabs pray from one side and we pray from the other side. So this, is so this is where Abraham is buried. Yeah, That's Abraham's tomb. Yeah, this is what they say, but it's really underneath. It's underneath us, yeah.
um, the cave is a place for, for couples. It's not only the, the men that were buried here, it's all, also the wives. So this is a place, it's called the tent of Avram and Sarah, mm -hmm. because they were very few together. So this is a place that we can pray in. But you can see that the, the writings, the Arab writings are still here. We didn't touch anything. We leave the place as original it is. as it yeah. is. Even though this is the area where the Jews pray. It's a synagogue where we and can this pray. Is the, Place where Sarah is and this is Sarah's tomb, yes, tomb. as you can see. Yeah. So you have Abraham from one side, look, Abraham's tomb is on one oh. side and Sarah's on the other side. So this is Abraham's tomb and side. next to it is Sarah's tomb. Exactly. No, that's wrong. Ah, <laughs> ילך אחורה להורים, לסבא, לסבתא, לדורות הקודמים. אם נעמיק בעץ הזה מספיק, ונלך אחורה ואחורה, כל אחד בעץ משפחה שלו, כל העצים האלו בסופו של דבר מגיעים ומתרכזים בנקודה אחת, והיא הנקודה הזאת. האבא והאימא, הסבא והסבתא, האבות והאימהות של כולנו, מפה. זאת אומרת שחברון היא הבסיס בכל ההיסטוריה היהודית, דבר מדהים. עכשיו, האבות האלו, האימהות האלו, הם לא רק אבות ביולוגיים, הם נותנים לנו את הזהות שלנו, את ההגדרה שלנו מי אנחנו. אנחנו בני אברהם, יצחק ויעקב. שלושה אבות, ארבע אימהות אנחנו. יש לנו שלושה אבות, יש לנו ארבע אימהות. אנחנו, הם האבות והאימהות שלנו עד היום. אז הם נותנים לנו את ההגדרה העצמית שלנו, את הזהות שלנו. את האמונה שלנו, אברהם נותן את האמונה, את הערכים, את החסד, את האמת, את התפארת, את כל הערכים, את ה... כל השפה התרבותית שלנו. אנחנו ממשיכים את אותן דמויות שנמצאות פה, שהגיעו הנה לפני כמעט ארבעת אלפים שנה. זה דבר מדהים. העומק, העומק ההיסטורי הזה, הוא, הוא בעצם הולך איתנו את כל ההיסטוריה, הוא מגדיר אותנו. הוא הולך איתנו עד היום, והוא מאוד מאוד רלוונטי היום. זה לא דבר שעבד במהלך ההיסטוריה, אלא אנחנו נושאים את המסר הזה עד היום, וכשחזרנו לארץ האבות, פה בארץ חמדת אבות, תתגשם נא כל התקוות. זאת אומרת, ארץ חמדת אבות, תמיד היה לנו חשוב לדעת שאנחנו חוזרים הביתה, לאבא ואימא, לאבות ולאימהות. וחזרנו לארץ אבות, וקמנו את, את המדינה שלנו, אנחנו קוראים לה מדינת ישראל. וישראל הראשון בעולם הוא פה. זה יעקב. זאת אומרת, זה חיבור פנטסטי של כל ההיסטוריה היהודית שנובעת מהמקום הזה, ונמצאת פה וחיה איתנו עד היום. כשאנחנו רואים היום את עם ישראל היום, ברוך השם עם חי וצומח ופורה ונובע, כשאתה רואה עץ חי, אתה יודע שיש לו שורשים חיים. אז השורשים האלו הם אמנם בתוך האדמה, לא רואים אותם, הם קבורים. הם קבורים, אבל הם חיים. ובלי שורשים חיים קבורים, אין עץ חי. וכשאתה רואה את עם ישראל חי, אתה יודע שהשורשים שלו, כמה שהם קבורים כאן, הם חיים. במובן הזה, האבות, כתוב, הם לא מתים, הם ישנים, הם חיים. ויעקב אבינו, כתוב עליו במפורש, יעקב אבינו לא מת, הוא חי. זאת אומרת, אתה רואה את, ה, את ההמשך של החיים שלו, אתה יודע שהוא חי. וכאן, כשיעקב נמצא פה, וממנו עם ישראל מתפתח, זכינו בדורנו לראות את המעבר הזה מיעקב לישראל. מאחד שהולך 
בעקבות ועקב עד שהוא נהפך לישראל, כי שרית עם אלוהים ועם אנשים בתוכן. ואנחנו קוראים היום עם ישראל, נקרא עם ישראל, בגלל התכונה הזאת של יעקב, שהממשיך אותה, המיישם אותה, זה יהודה. This is a unique monument, standing here 2,000 years, complete, no brick is missing. It's a mysterious monument, mysterious building, it was built here 2,000 years by the Jews who lived here in Hebron and the Judea, when the temple was still existing, you can see this building. as a model to the walls of the Temple Mount. What the secret of this building? It's really a monument that symbolizes the Jewish history. The Jewish forefathers and mothers that established the Jewish nation, established the Jewish history. During the history, many other nations came. When the land of Israel, the land of Judea, became under Christian authority, they built here a church. The Christians also came here to find their roots of Abraham. And then Jews and Christians prayed here in the building side by side as a symbol of coexistence, symbol of some sort of unity towards the basic roots, Abraham. Later on, the Muslims. When the Islam came, you can see here the minarets. In the beginning, Muslims and Jews prayed here, together, side by side. So this place can symbolize their common attitude and the common history of people from many religions, from many faiths, to their common origin of faith and values. But what happened here later, when radical Islam took over in the time of the Mamluks, they prohibited Jews and Christians from entering. And the Jews had to stand outside, right here in this spot, this place was the steps that led into the building, but Jews could send only seven steps. So the Jews stood here near the seventh step for 700 years, from 1267 to 1967, waiting and willing for the day they can return. And that day came. In 1967, they came a place for Jews to come to pray, Now you see many Jews come here to pray. At the same time, Christians and Muslims pray. So this place symbolizes the roots of faith, the roots of mercy, the roots of values, the roots of all the people who want to live peacefully and friendly with each other. This is the source of the name Hebron in Hebrew. Hebron is very close to Haver. Haver is a friend. Let's hope this place will be ever a place of Haver, a place of friendship. When I call this building, whatever I call it, I don't call it the Cave of the Patriarchs for two reasons. First thing, you're not going to actually get to see the cave because the cave is underneath the building. Right. The building is on top of caves. So it's just really a tomb. You're coming to a tomb. Just like when you come to somebody's tomb, you don't actually go underneath and see the bodies. The same thing, you're in a building on top. So that's number one. Second thing is the word patriarchs. It's a little bit of an unfair word. You know, Aron, the first person that was buried there was Sarah, our matriarch. So if anything, it's Tomb of the Matriarchs and the Patriarchs. It's really about fathers and mothers together, okay? And the reason it's about fathers and mothers together is because the founding couples 
the first family of Israel are buried here in Hebron. So who is that? Who are the founders of our peoplehood? Abraham and Sarah, that was a couple. Isaac and Rebecca, that's the next couple. And Jacob and Leah. Jacob also had another wife, who's Rachel, the sister of Leah. She's buried in Beit Lechem in the tomb of Rachel. And so we have the mothers and the fathers together. So the first thing is to understand is that this is a city of couples. This is a city of love. This is a city of togetherness. And the simple name of it already gives it away. Chevron comes from the word chibur, connection, togetherness, friendship, love, unity. Okay, that's what Chevron is really about. And about 3,800 years ago, our forefather Abraham, he's our forefather in terms of the fact that he's the father of our peoplehood, but he's also the father of so many nations. As the Bible even says, Avraham, Av Hamon Goim, you're the father of many nations. And what's so important about that is that uh, he wanted to give honor to his wife Sarah who passed away. So the first step is the love. And he purchased, he negotiates with the Hittites here with Ephron the Hittite. He negotiates with him for an eternal inheritance. Not for a gift and not for a property for rent, but rather as a sepulcher for the first family of Israel. And that happened 3,800 years ago. He buys the property and he buries his beloved wife Sarah there. Later on, he passes away. And it's his two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, the father of the Jews and maybe the father of the Arabs, who comes together, come together to bury Abraham in Hebron, right next to Sarah. After that, Isaac and Rebekah are buried here, Leah is buried here, and finally Jacob is dying in Egypt. And he says to his children, don't bury me here in Egypt, bury me in Hebron with the rest of the family. Swear to me that you're going to do this. And they in fact take his, take his casket and walk with it from uh, uh, Egypt all the way to here to Eretz Yisrael, to Hebron, and they bury their beloved father Yaakov here, sealing off that tomb. That was about 3,500 years ago. Then the Jews go into Egyptian slavery, then they come out of Egypt with the Exodus, then they go through the Red Sea, in the splitting of the Red Sea to Mount Sinai, receive the Torah, and now head to the land of Israel to fulfill the Torah in the land of Israel. They screwed up a little bit and rejected the land of Israel. They got punished, returned to spin around the desert for 40 years to wander the desert. A generation dies off, the next generation is ready to come in. They come in with Joshua, and it's going to be Caleb, Caleb ben Yifune, who's going to come and conquer this land here, and conquer Hebron and make it an inheritance for his children, also a Levite city. And later on, it's going to be where King David, 3,000 years ago, is going to start his kingdom here. He's going to be the first Jewish king of all of Israel. And all the tribes are going to come gather and they're going to put a crown on his head here in Hebron. So it starts, uh, according to mysticism, about 5,000 years ago, it starts with the burial of Adam and Eve here. We didn't get into that, but that's according to Jewish mysticism. The first people to be buried here are Adam and Eve. Then 4,000 years ago, Abraham and the first biblical family. 3,000 years ago, King David. And 2,000 years ago, a king named Herod, a weird Jewish king, comes and builds this monumental structure atop of the tombs of the mothers and fathers. Uh, and that's the structure that we know today. It's never been broken. It's existed here for 2,000 years. It's today the way it was then, only with added parts to it. Uh, and the Jewish people have been coming here and living here ever since for the last 2,000 years, connected to Hebron. We lost the right to live in Hebron when a jihadist mob in 1929 destroyed the Jewish community that lived here behind me in places like this building, Beit Hadassah. Uh, but then we were kicked out of here, booted out of here. The British helped boot us out as well. Uh, we were out of the city from 1929 until 1967. In all those years, they destroyed all the Jewish property and took it over, ransacked it, destroyed our synagogues. The Six Day War came and we came back to Hebron. And today we are continuing to build here, to settle this place, to resettle this place, to live here and to be able to bring tourists and visitors from the whole world to connect with the tradition of Abraham. And Machpelah means double. And so it was a double cave. Just like there's doubles, husbands and wives buried there. And also another meaning is that there's like a, a room that, uh, uh, that you enter to and then the caves are past that. In any case, it's a mystical word and really means double. Why did Abraham choose this place? We don't know exactly. The mysticism tells us that he saw 
the light and smell the smell of the Garden of Eden. And he understood, according to mysticism, that this was one of the entrances to the Garden of Eden. One way or the other, why exactly he chose this place is unknown. But he was a prophet, he was a great prophet, uh, and he knew the importance of this place. And the truth is that the forefathers and mothers knew about the, what we call in Hebrew, the sgula, the powers of these places. And they chose Hebron to be the tomb of the fathers and mothers. So Ephron the Hittite, yeah. uh, the Hittites are where Turkey is today. That's where they're from, but they lived here also. And they offered to give it to him as a gift because he was an important person. And they wanted to get honor from the fact that they honored this important guy, Abraham. Uh, but Abraham didn't want that. He wanted an internal inheritance, one which he can gift and pass on as an inheritance from generation to generation, forever in the family. We are that family. Yeah. Uh, and so nobody could say, hey, come on, it was just a gift. We didn't mean to give it to you. It was just a gift for Abraham. No, it was a sale. One of the greatest moments of my life was when uh, Minister of Justice, Ayala Chaked, stood in front of the tomb of the fathers and mothers and said, we have a legal document that shows our proof of purchase of this property, this land, and this is our deed to this place and it'll never leave our family. What can you tell us about the similarity in the architecture between the cave, the tomb of the patriarchs, and the western wall? Well, the western wall and the, the tomb of the mothers and fathers in Hebron are really built by the same dude, which is Herod, with the same incredible technology that has lasted to this very day. Uh, and if it wasn't for the Roman legions destroying the temple, it would still be standing there today. Uh, just like the tomb of the fathers and mothers standing there today. Uh, amazing Roman architecture with a Jewish flavor uh, in the Holy Land, really a testament to the influence of the, the cooperation between Roman genius and Jewish genius. Again, chibu. Yes. Chibu. Where in Jerusalem it becomes divergent, either Rome or Israel. In Hebron, they can coexist. Just like Arabs and Jews are, should be able to coexist here in Hebron. Just like husbands and wives coexist here in Hebron. Uh, so too does Roman architecture, together with Jewish genius, uh, exist here. Uh, and it's a fabulous structure, which is 2,000 years old and is standing today. The only thing is it's had been added onto, especially by the Mamluks uh, in the, the year um, 1492, when they came to town and they added those minarets. Before that, also the Christians, added a church on top of the Tomb of the Fathers and Mothers. So different peoples have been here, but the basic structure has stayed the same. So it has been a, a, a place of worship ever since. Like, it just passed from Jews to Christians, to Muslims, again Christians, That's Muslims. That's right. That's a very important point, Aron. It's never stopped being a, a, a holy place of visitation and prayer, never. Yeah. The minute it was founded, and really all people's lovers of Abraham feel that this is their place to come and connect to, to his image, to his personality, and to pray there. Now the forefathers, they established the prayers, the morning prayer, the afternoon prayer, and the evening prayer, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, and so this place has been a place of prayer. Uh, for absolutely right. For Jews, for Christians under Byzantium, then Muslims, uh, then Christians, then Muslims again, uh, and now back under Jewish control mostly. Today the tomb is split in half and there's Jewish prayer and, and Muslim prayer, but the point is 100% it is a place that uh, connects people to the heritage of Abraham and to his way of serving God. Right after the book of Genesis, Bereshit, right after that, there's always going to be, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Something that the forefathers did Something about the way that they lived their life, their discovery of how to serve God is our model. And when we start our more central prayer in Judaism, which is called the 18 benedictions prayer, the Shmona Esra, we start with Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. This is something that Joseph is gonna say. This is something that Moses is gonna say over and over again. It's, it's re repeated throughout the, the Torah many times, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they are our inspiration. It was God's love for them that really caused God to choose them and their children after them. So I really, I want to tell you, Aron, I really am impressed with your line of questions because you're one of the first people in a long time that I've heard 
instead of focusing too much on the politics, to understand that what's really behind the issue of Hebron is the forefathers and mothers. That's really what is at the heart. And it's at the heart for us Jews, it's at the heart for Christians, at the heart for Muslims. And being a child of Abraham, and that's what separates us, that's what also brings us together. And we see now with the Abraham Accords that the children of Abraham want to come back uh, together, work together for, for a better region. So past all of the conflict and all the issues, there's something that, that actually binds all of humanity here to the pathway of Abraham. Uh, we, we, are, we are walking in his footsteps, and I really recommend for everybody to come here. God bless you, Aaron. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here.